we want you to meet 46-year-old Randy Pausch. He's father of three, invited to give what are called the last lectures, a series at Carnegie Mellon University. And we read about him in the Wall Street Journal because in this professor's case, there is a meaning as he tells the students what he's learned about life by looking at death. He told the room that he has pancreatic cancer. If you had one last lecture to give before you died, what would it be? In case there's anybody who wandered in and doesn't know the backstory, my dad always taught me when there's an elephant in the room, introduce them. Uh, if you look at my CAT scans, there are approximately 10 tumors in my liver, and the doctors told me three to six months of good health left. Uh, that was a month ago, so you can do the math. The diagnosis, a grim reality, but the professor proved he doesn't do grim. We're not going to talk about spirituality and religion. Um, Although I will tell you that I have experienced a deathbed conversion. Um, I just bought a Macintosh. <laughs> now, I knew I'd get 9% of the audience with that, but uh, if I don't seem as depressed or morose as I should be, um, sorry to disappoint you. Uh, uh, and I assure you, I am not in denial. We cannot change the cards we are dealt, just how we play the hand. And the other thing is, I am in phenomenally good health right now. I mean, is the greatest thing of cognitive dissonance you will ever see is the fact that I am in really good shape. In fact, I'm in better shape than most of you. So anybody who wants to cry or pity me can come down and do a few of those, and then you may pity me. <laughs> and with the laughter, a way of looking at his life that shines light on the lives of others. I was going back through the family archives, and what was really amazing was I couldn't find any pictures of me as a kid where I wasn't smiling. So what were my childhood dreams? You may not agree with this list, but <laughs> I was there. Uh, <laughs> being in zero gravity, playing in the National Football League, uh, authoring an article in the World Book Encyclopedia, I guess you can tell the nerds early. Um, As you grow, he said, you'll discover that your real friends may surprise you. I had a coach, Jim Graham. There was one practice where he just rode me, all practice. Just, you're doing this wrong, you're doing this wrong, go back and do it again, you owe me, you're doing push-ups after practice. And when it was all over, one of the other assistant coaches came over and said, yeah, Coach Graham rode you pretty hard, didn't he? I said, yeah. He said, that's a good thing. He said, when you're screwing up and nobody's saying anything to you anymore, that means they gave up. And that's a lesson that stuck with me my whole life, is that when you see, when you see yourself doing something badly and nobody's bothering to tell you anymore, that's a very bad place to be. Your critics are your ones telling you they still love you and care. But remember, the brick walls are there for a reason. Right? The brick walls are not there to keep us out. The brick walls are there to give us a chance to show how badly we want something. Because the brick walls are there to stop the people who don't want it badly enough. Uh, don't complain, just work harder. Right? It's a picture of Jackie Robinson. It was in his contract not to complain even when the fans spit on him. Find the best in everybody. You might have to wait a long time, sometimes years, but people will show you their good side. Just keep waiting no matter how long it takes. And be prepared, luck is truly where preparation meets opportunity. It's not about how to achieve your dreams, it's about how to lead your life. If you lead your life the right way, the karma will take care of itself. The dreams will come to you. And then, his goodbye. Talk's not for you, it's for my kids. Thank you all, good night. And the professor, Dr. Randy Pausch, joins us this morning. It's Come good on. to have you here. You said once that your mother used to introduce you as what, a doctor, but, but... Not the kind who helps people. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, you say you don't do pity. And in fact, at one point you said, don't spare me the talk about herbal supplements when I ask you to give me a break here and let me bring joy and wonder to every moment. Yeah, um, you know, I've never understood pity and, and sort of self-pity as an emotion. Uh, we have a finite amount of time. Whether it's short or long doesn't really matter. 
you know, life is to be lived, and I've never met anybody who was pitying themselves or pitying others who was making the best and highest use of anybody's time. Was it hard to write that lecture? Um, it was hard because I was in the process of moving my family <laughs> and dealing with all the logistics, so it was, it was a, an exercise in time management. Uh, and I was sitting at Johns Hopkins uh, waiting for the final confirming results of just how bad it was. We already knew my goose was cooked. And I turned to my wife and I said, I've got it. You know, I've got the narrative. You know, there is something unique about me. I did have these childhood dreams, and I did manage to get lucky enough to make most of them come true. And that gave me the arch to put all the life lessons under. And uh, you've said it too that you're creating memories for your kids, but mm -hmm. memories of your values, that it's not about remembering you, it's about remembering what you stood for. Yeah, I, I think a memorial to the man doesn't make a lot of sense, although Carnegie Mellon is doing some very nice things. It's an incredible university to honor me, but I think that you're absolutely quite right. It's uh, what you stand for is what you want your kids to, to take away from it. You've said, I'm not afraid of death, but I am afraid of dying. What did you mean? Um, well, uh, the particular way I'm going to die is not going to be particularly pleasant. It will probably be physically uncomfortable, and it won't be an easy thing for either my wife or my kids to watch. So I, I don't think I'm going to enjoy the process as much as I'd like to. I think it'll be a, a real challenge to see if I can squeeze the lemons hard enough to still get some lemonade the last few weeks. Um, but death itself, uh, you know, to be cliched, death is a part of life. And, you know, it's going to happen to all of us. And I have the blessing of getting a little bit of advance notice and being able to optimize my use of time uh, down the home stretch. So your lecture, in a sense, continues this morning. Uh, anything else you want to say to the, stu <laughs> to the students all out there um, in this room and that room, every place across the country? Uh, you know, life is a gift. And again, it, it sounds trite, but uh, if you wait long enough, other people will show you their good side. And if there's anything I've learned, uh, that is absolutely true. And, and sometimes it takes a lot longer than you might like, but the onus is on you to keep the hope and keep the waiting. You also said you'd be surprised how helpful people can be if you tell them the truth. Oh my God, yes. Uh, so many people take the, the shortcut. The, you know, I can try to get something in the short term if I shade the truth a little bit. And once you start shading the truth, it's amazing how far you can rationalize. But if you just hold to the integrity of, I'm going to tell you the truth all the time, there are so many times in my life where, you know, two months, two years, 10 years, 20 years later, somebody says, you know, I, I dealt with this Pausch guy and he always told me the truth and now I'm in a position to maybe help him out. And being the kind of person other people want to help is the most objective way I can describe lead your life the right way because it's a very tangible, selfish payoff that you can you know, be motivated by, I guess. And they're here for you now? I cannot tell you. I, uh, uh, Dennis Cosgrove, who's one of my favorite people in the whole universe, said, so how does it feel to be living the ending of It's a Wonderful Life? Um, there have been so many people who have just swamped my family and me. And, you know, my wife has just been incredible through all this. I, I knew I married a tough woman. I didn't know I'd be cashing in all those chips so thoroughly. But uh, she had just been incredible. And so many people have helped us in so many ways. It's just been very heartwarming. Well, Dr. Pausch, I just want to say we love your mother, but you are the kind of doctor who helps me. I mean, thank you. Uh, thank you. It's, it's a real honor to meet you. And you can watch more of the professor's lecture on abcnews.com. Go there. Watch the whole thing. Go there. It's good for your life. We'll be back.